I'm Robbie Suave, joined today by Reason Magazine's Emma Camp. Now let's get right into it. The country's biggest story right now, of course, is pro-Palestine protesters taking over Columbia University's academic building this week as part of their larger encampment on the prestigious university's campus. Now they demand that the Board of Trustees divest from companies profiting off of IDF operations. Over on MSNBC, head of the Anti-Defamation League, Jonathan Greenblatt, decried on-campus demonstrators and said they reminded him of a certain other group of protesters. Let's watch. Because the administration was so afraid of these people. I see these videos, I see these images of mass protesters breaking into buildings, barricading them with furniture, and look, I'm reminded of January the 6th. That's what this looks like to me. I mean, we talk at ADL about right-wing extremists about masked proud boys showing up at school board meetings, about oath keepers wearing masks. I look at this and I, this is what I see. And let's be clear about right. one thing. The students who are doing this, the groups behind it, SJP, Palestinian Youth Movement, their response to President Shafiq's offer last night was, "We Columbia will burn. I mean, these students, we shouldn't mm -hmm. treat them like children when they're hardened activists. All right, Emma, I know you've got a lot of thoughts on this. You and I are both uh, people of the campus protest free speech beat. So there you had the head of the ADL um, making a point that almost I think is opposite of at least what I think. So also many of the protesters, some of them at least on January 6th, were engaged in um, First Amendment protected protest, and they are allowed to do that even if you disagree with their cause. You can't go into the Capitol building or administrative building in Columbia, you can't smash the windows, you can't occupy it and expect to suffer no consequences. That's not free speech, that's different from protest. Oh yeah, for sure. There is a very long history in this country of civil disobedience, including occupying buildings. But the whole point of it being civil disobedience is that it is against the law, it's not protected expression. So students who want to engage in this fine, I guess, but you need to be prepared to accept the consequences. And to the comparison to January 6th, I, I don't think it's fully fair. For one, I do think invading the Capitol building is a whole lot worse than going into a college administrative building. Um, and again, I really think the main comparisons are just between, you know, what's happening on Columbia and many dozens of other well, and other attempts now I've seen at UCLA, for instance, there was a group of protesters who actually prevented a Jewish student from entering that area of campus. It's on video. He said, I'm trying to just get to my class. He's wearing a Star of David, and they will not let him get past. These are pro-Palestinian activists um, wearing, also wearing COVID masks because this seems to have <laughs> become part of the, uh, the protest for some reason, intersectionality, how great is that? Um, look, I think the protesters are in danger of making themselves deeply unsympathetic figures. Um, the, you know, I, and I'm not characterizing all the protesters this way. I have, have not seen a lot of violence or a lot of uh, anti-Jewish harassment, but I've certainly seen some of it. And occupying buildings, and then in particularly getting uh, rough with students or preventing them from accessing area of their campuses. I mean, there are people just trying to go to their classes, having, they're about to have their graduations disrupted again, you know, however many years after this happened with COVID. Um, I, I think the protesters could end up alienating a lot of people. Oh, for sure. I mean, I find these protesters to be obnoxious at best and really odious and hateful and anti-Semitic at worst. And I think part of why that is, is that these are not really peace demonstrators, right? Like on the one hand, they are often highlighting really genuine tragedies, violence, loss of life in Gaza, but at the same time, they're often doing it by directly endorsing Hamas, by directly endorsing violence, as long as it's directed against Israelis. They're, they're pro-war demonstrators, essentially. And so I find that very difficult to be sympathetic to or convinced by, while at the same time still being very steadfast in their ability yeah, to, they get to do engage that. in First Amendment protected speech, of course. Um, but yeah, I, I have a hard time believing that these campus protests, particularly the way they're being carried out, are going to persuade all that many people to side with them. What do you make of how uh, the campuses, how the administrations of these universities are handling this? I think you've had a range of, uh, of of, uh, of strategies uh, taken by the universities. I saw the University of Chicago put out what I thought was a very good statement, and that is, of course, a university which does have this very stated and very famous commitment to free speech that it, uh, it talks about and has tried to get other universities to sign on to, um, where they say, yes, of course, the First Amendment 
protected free speech. Um, some level of encampments and setting up tents might be okay, uh, but then it can eventually get to a point where now you're violating other people's rights to occupy that same space or move about the campus. That will not be tolerated. At Columbia specifically, it's like, it's like calling in the police was the first strategy. I don't know if that was such a good idea because I think even as some of the protests are in, unsympathetic, we, I, I don't know that we want to summon the police, stick the police on them. Some of the images coming out of um, other campuses where like professors have been wrestled to the ground and other people, that it just seems so gratuitous and so needless. Um, particularly if it's just, if it's an academic matter, if it's they're missing their classes, they're not showing up, they can, you know, they can be suspended, they can, the university can do something, but like foisting it off on the police to eject them before they had any of those conversations just seemed like it was going to make everyone mad and it was a really mistaken approach. Oh, for sure. You know, I think the University of Chicago, Wesleyan as well, I've seen a really good statement from their president, uh, from their president, are bright spots in kind of a disturbing trend, which is you have these sort of two poles where it seems to me like there are a lot of instances. Um, the University of Texas at Austin is a good example. Emory University is another good example where seemingly completely peaceful protests that are not tent encampments, as far as I've seen, um, are being met with really aggressive police response. And particularly when you're looking at the University of Texas, which is a public school, um, reacting in such a way that I think obviously violates those students' First Amendment rights. And I think you could connect the situation in Texas specifically to uh, an executive order from Governor Greg Abbott directing schools to crack down on anti-Semitic speech. On the other hand, you have schools like Columbia, where there is this kind of muddied mismatch response where they brought in the cops when they shouldn't have and now that students are you know busting out windows and taking over buildings they should really bring in the police in that situation and it doesn't seem like they're doing that and there's this really disjointed response and in those cases the students are, are doing much more than they are in places like Texas um, and so I'm just sort of dissatisfied and sort of cynical about a lot of the administration response I think kind of how I feel about it when it comes to places like Texas and also Columbia is why can't they both lose <laughs> a little bit? Why can't they both lose? But they have their First Amendment right, rights and course, those should be course. protected. Yes, absolutely. Um, but people then get to form their impressions about what's going on. All right, well, next we're going to talk about how young voters actually feel, what policies are important to them, and if these protesters, are they representative of young people in general? Watch more below, like, share, and subscribe.